Welcome to Module 6. In this module, we'll look at respiratory risks and the controls that can be applied to keep workers safe. What are respiratory risks? Respiratory risks are caused by the fact that your lungs can be affected by breathing in contaminated air, oxygen deficient atmospheres, dust, gases or vapours. Among construction workers, there is a high incidence of respiratory problems with the leading cause being exposure to dust and respirable crystalline silica, RCS, resulting in silicosis. Other prevalent respiratory diseases amongst construction workers are chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD, and asthma. Anything that is airborne can cause you harm. For example, dust and fumes can cause occupational lung disease. Typical hazardous materials can include paint dust when sanding, solvents, cement dust when cutting cement blocks, and silica dust found in both cement and plaster. You should also avoid working in a confined space with no extraction and always be aware that strong smelling chemicals can make you dizzy. Here are some effective precautions. Use wet cutting to minimise dust getting into the air. Use dust extraction where possible, such as local exhaust ventilation, LEV. Always wear the correct personal protective equipment, PPE. Never undertake a task without the correct respiratory protective equipment, RPE. Make sure the respirator fits correctly, particularly with tight fitting respirators such as filtering face pieces and half and full masks. Never use a disposable face mask for more than one day or one shift. Always ensure there is plenty of ventilation. A variety of RPE is available, from simple filtering face pieces and respirators to power assisted respirators. Be aware that filter masks only filter particles and have no effect on toxic gases. Some types of breathing apparatus provide an independent supply of breathable air. For example, fresh air hoses, compressed air lines, and self-contained breathing apparatus. The right type of respirator filter must always be used, as each is effective for only a limited range of substances. And remember, filters have a limited life and should be changed regularly. You will need to use appropriate breathing apparatus in a confined space. Please click next to continue. Asbestos can be found in any building built before the year 2000, including houses, factories, offices, schools and hospitals, and causes around 5,000 deaths every year. When materials containing asbestos are disturbed or damaged, fibres are released into the air. When inhaled, they can cause serious diseases. These diseases will not affect you immediately. They often take a long time to develop. But once diagnosed, it is often too late to do anything. This is why it's crucial to protect yourself now. Exposure to asbestos can cause asbestosis, lung cancer and non-malignant lung disease. There are three main types of asbestos. Blue, chrysidolite, brown, amosite and white, chrysotile. Asbestos was used for a range of building materials including corrugated sheeting, artex, floor tiles and drain pipes and gutters. Before starting work on a building or structure which may contain asbestos, a professional risk assessment should be carried out. Most asbestos removal work will require a contractor holding a licence from the Health and Safety Executive, HSE. If a licence isn't needed, you can do maintenance work on or around asbestos with the appropriate controls in place. Some non-licensed work also has additional requirements, such as the notification of work, medical surveillance and record keeping. This work is known as notifiable non-licensed work. 
Any worker who is liable to disturb asbestos during their day-to-day -day work needs to receive appropriate training to enable them to protect themselves and others. Every employer must make sure that anyone who is liable to disturb asbestos during their regular work or who supervises those employees gets the correct level of information, instruction and training. There are three primary levels of information, instruction and training. These relate to asbestos awareness, non-licensable work with asbestos, including NNLW, and licensable work with asbestos. Attending a training course on its own will not make a worker competent. Competence is developed over time by implementing and consolidating skills learned during training, on-the-job learning, instruction and assessment. Please click Next to continue.